Welcome to Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers Daily Network. Casey Porter joined by Austin Brubaker as we are each and every week. I think you're right there, Austin. Yeah, hey, Austin, busy day for us. So how's it going today? It's going pretty good, Casey. It is an exciting day. Definitely a busy day for here. I know, at least for me personally, work was crazy. Then I had to do stuff after work. Now it's about 930 here on the East Coast, but I couldn't be more excited. The Dodgers have arrived in Seoul, Korea. We'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about spring breakout, uh, which will be coming up tomorrow afternoon, I believe, on the West Coast. I believe it's 4 o'clock Pacific on the West Coast. I don't know exactly what time it's at uh but i'm really excited to be here friday night in the big town here on dodgers dogs here on the, as part of the dodgers daily network no doubt about it and let me brag on you dodgers dogs we have set a goal austin and i have we want to get to a thousand views for every video which if we can do that i cannot tell you how much growth that would show for this channel we can't do that without you we have hit that goal on almost every single video now there's going to be some here or there that that aren't as maybe as as topic heavy that that people would like to see that haven't hit that but for the most part you dodgers dogs you dodgers dailies out there have helped us reach our goal we can't thank you enough so let everybody know that we are in the chat right now we're going to have a hell of a good time hey we're going to talk about the roster the final cuts we're going to talk about the spring breakout game other than that we're going to talk to you. I see our moderator, Mike, is in the house. Orlando's in the house. Mike, I'm sure you are very tired. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for moderating. Mike is getting some great content in spring training, and he wrote his first story for Dodgers Beat. Congratulations to him that he got picked up and actually got credentials to go to spring training and credentials to go to some Dodgers games. So congratulations to Mike. Super proud that we were able to, to help him on Dodgers Daily get to a position to where he can go to games and, and get a position where he can show off all of his talents. So, Mike, congratulations to you. I'm glad you had a great time at spring training. I enjoyed looking at all your videos. I enjoyed the fact that Austin, Mike was the first one on Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He got to see him pitch live and write a story about the live outing that he saw with Yamamoto. That was a cool I story. Oh, no, that is absolutely incredible. Us, we, as part of Dodgers Daily, like to try to uplift a lot of people. Yeah. I think that started out from a heart of, especially the minor league players with all of these guys that don't get a whole lot of coverage. We like to make sure that they get the rest necessary coverage that they deserve. And like we like to cover the Dodgers as well. We also like to uplift the individuals that be uh, that are a part of here mike has done a lot of work at dodgers daily yeah. writing a bunch of great articles being on several of the shows as well so to see him take that and really elevate that to a place over at dodgers beat and be able to write articles especially about international talent yes. and especially about the international talent of yoshinobu yamamoto man that could have been that it's somebody that you've been watching for quite a long time to finally be able to see that in action and to be credentialed by that that is really cool and i'm it's it's i congratulations mike it, it it's it's really cool to see and continue to watch your journey as you continue to grow you're going to do continue to do some amazing things it's pretty cool to know the dodgers daily helped in that journey too isn't it i mean that's oh, yeah. that's all part of it right yeah no that that is really cool that that really helps make what we do worth it as well so just some cool stuff going around just like there's some cool stuff going around with the Dodgers right now. They're in Korea right now. This is starting they are. to get real. Yeah, they are in <laughs> Korea right now. This is real. The 2024 season is practically here in five days from now, or you can say kind of four days, just given how it's going to happen during the middle of the night. Uh, the Dodgers are going to be playing regular season games that count against the San Diego Padres in Korea, which they have already arrived. The travel roster has been announced. Man, doesn't this feel great to be this close to opening day? It does. We're going to get to that travel roster. That's going to be our first topic tonight. And before we do, I want to get to our wonderful, wonderful chat. Again, we do this together. We make this such a great show because we do this together. I'm going to say it for the first time tonight. Won't be the last time, Austin. Not the biggest crowd here at Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers Daily Network, but it is the 
It is the best crowd out there. 100%. We have an elite crowd that shows up for these Dodgers Dog Show, and we cannot wait to read your comments and get into this conversation tonight. Good evening, Jay from SoCal. Had crazy win the past two days. Yes, Chris Fabor, good evening. He says, hello, Casey. Good evening to yourself. Matty Man 5 Dodge. Anyone else a little worried about how things are going? Uh, and then a week break to boot. Yes, this is a screwy deal. I know Major League Baseball likes the fact that the Dodgers are going to Korea, a country that, you know, the Dodgers are, I mean, they're rock stars, especially with this group. And then they're the, the number one international team. And then you have Yoshio Otani and all these. I mean, it couldn't have worked out any better for Major League Baseball, right? And, and that is really cool for Major League Baseball. But in a lot of ways, it's really kind of, it's kind of a crappy schedule for the Dodgers. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, I don't mean to sound negative or anything like that. I'm not complaining about it. But I think Matty Man 5 Dodge does have a point that this is a little bit worrisome with this schedule. Yes, yeah, no? For the, for the players, it's probably going to suck because you got to go to a different part of the world. Not to, And the reason why it sucks is because it just messes with your routine, messes with your schedule. You have to gear up for competition for a couple of regular season games, then maybe take a step back, then ramp it back up for a domestic opening day against the Cardinals. That can, that can screw say? with it a little bit. Did you say domestic uh, opening day? Yeah, just over the United States. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but once... But the thing about it, though, is this is great for the game of baseball. It is great that Major League Baseball is giving it an opportunity in South Korea to be able to watch regular season Major League action and continue to grow this game on a more of an international stage. We saw how great the game was during the World Baseball Classic in 2023. And I think just continuing to grow the game is going to continue to gather more and more talent from all over the place. Uh, around the globe, I think it's going to be a really positive thing for Major League Baseball. For the Dodgers, at least in the short term, it could just mess with some of their routine, mess with some of their schedule. They have enough talent, though. They should be able to adapt and react to everything. They should be able to take every, every single punch that they are given and turn it into a positive because this team has too much talent and they're going to be ready for whatever comes their way. It's going to be a good night. You know why? Why's that? Soul Bro is in the house. Haven't seen Soul Bro in a while. I love it when Soul Bro from Portland joins the Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers Daily Network. So good evening. Gregory, good evening to yourself, Young Yi. As we're all getting started, it is 1038 in the morning in Korea right now as we speak. So right now it is 930 here. So that would be about 11 hours earlier, I think, if I did my math right. But I'm terrible at math, so take that for what that's worth. Roy Estrada. Hey, I love it when Roy joins. Roy joins every night. We do this together, Roy, and this is so much fun. Good evening, Dodgers fam. Good evening back to yourself. Hey, Daryl Jackson, we do this together every single Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Daryl always comes and joins us, and it is such a wonderful conversation with him. Roy says, uh, saw the Dodgers arrive in Korea. Koreans love their Dodgers. They love baseball, and they love the most international team in baseball, the, the international team of the major leagues, the Dodgers. No doubt about that. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. They are the international team right now with this, this superstar collection of talent that they've gotten, and especially because you have the best player in the game of baseball. Combine that with the biggest free agent signing of a pitcher in Yoshinobu Yamamoto from Japan, from a little bit closer to that side of the world. There's going to be a lot of fans that turn into Dodgers fans, which was part of the appeal of Dodgers getting both of those guys because they're going to create new fans that are going to buy a whole bunch of merch that are going to become lifelong fans. And especially as the Dodgers move forward as they play in Korea, and as it sounds like there might be rumors about them playing in Japan for a regular season game coming up pretty soon, which would be incredible. You're just going to continue to grow your fan base. The Dodgers have given people reasons to root for them because of the great personalities and great talents that they have on their team. So Mike got to write all these stories about Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He was the first on it. I mean, he wrote for Dodgers Daily about this guy way before anybody else was on him. He stuck to his guns when other people were saying, oh, he's going to go other places. He stuck to his guns. He was the Yoshinobu Yamamoto source, right? And then guess what he got to do in spring training? He got to actually ask him a question at a press conference. 
right there in front of him. How cool is that? Oh, that is incredible. Yeah, I can't even imagine yeah. doing something like that. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, no, congratulations to Mike. That is to be able to ask him, not just be able to go to a game and watch him pitch after you've written about him a whole lot, but to be able to do that and to be able to be legit, ask him a question is super cool. Yeah. Hey, DJ Jesse, good evening. I love when DJ Jesse joins. Again, not the biggest crowd on earth, although it is growing, Austin, but we do have the best crowd. DJ Jesse, you are part of that, part of the reason why these shows are so fun. Miss Dodger Baseball, what's up? With guy who threw egg at Roberts, official stated they got person has mental issues. Why didn't we hear egg tossed at Padres? What kind of idiot would throw an egg at, at the Dodgers man? I mean, what the hell is that? That what? I mean, that's yeah. I don't know. What'd yeah, you think of that? I, yeah, I I don't know why anybody would try to throw an egg at any one of the Dodgers, even if you are upset. Maybe it was a Padres fan and they're trying to make some sort of statement. If it's some sort of Dodgers fan, that doesn't make any sort of sense. This team has given you every reason to be positive about this team. I know the past couple of seasons haven't worked out in the postseason, but they've done everything they can during this offseason to attempt to rectify that. So there is absolutely no excuse for throwing an egg at somebody. Uh, I have no idea if it hit or not, but either way, there's no excuse for throwing an egg. Stop doing that. That's stupid. Trey B., good evening. Thank you so much for joining. Part of the reason why the Dodgers dogs is is so much fun to have. Trey B. says the Dodgers are the Beatles out there. I love it. Part of the reason why the Dodgers dogs show as part of the Dodgers Daily Network is not the biggest, but it is the best. Trey B., Good evening, and thank you for, uh, so much for joining. DJ Jesse wants to know why they didn't throw the eggs at the Padres. Well, how about this, Austin? Going to talk a little smack right off the bat because they didn't care about the Padres, and they're jealous of the Dodgers. How's that sound, huh? There you go. That, uh, <laughs> that seems valid. Hey, Roy Estrada. Roy was in Korea for 13 years. How about that? All you saw was hmm. Dodger gear, never saw Padres, unless it was a soldier who was lost. All right, fantastic. Chris Faborg, are the exhibition games televised? Do you have any idea on that, Austin? I actually, I actually have no idea if the exp- exhibition games are televised. That's something I'd have to look up to see if they are. That can be something that I check out real quick. Hey, yeah, go ahead and do that while I'm reading some of these yeah, yeah. comments. Omari Parker, Dodgers are loved here in Korea. Good evening, Omari. That's a name that does not look totally familiar. So, hey, every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, Omari, we have a heck of a good time here on Dodgers Dogs. You will find this is maybe, that will not maybe, this is the most knowledgeable, best baseball crowd out there. We will all have our opinions. We will all do it respectfully, and we will cover every single side of every issue, and it is a super amount of fun. So thank you so much for joining Omari. Yes, and I'll just point out right now, I believe the exhibition games, the one uh, tomorrow, Saturday, uh, and the one on Monday, I believe, should be televised on Sportsnet LA. That's what I'm seeing right now that I believe they should be. Very good. Mike says, our moderator, if you like to talk Dodgers baseball, join the Dodgers Daily Discord. And he left the link in the Discord. Chuck, hey, good evening, Chuck. The crowd at the airport was non-existent when the Sadres arrived. All right. Lots of comedy there. And having a good time talking about, about the arrival of the Dodgers and the Padres in Korea. Matty Man 5 Dodge, not to be a drag, but the Dodgers could wake up 2-8 to eight in their first 10 before they dump the jet lag. Yep. Soul Bro, yes, yes. Jay, hey, good evening, Jay. Dylan Hernandez, LA Times reported, team officials believe the Dodgers also will be chosen to start their 2025 campaign in Japan. That goes to what you're talking about, Austin. Yeah, no, that would be really intriguing if the Dodgers decide to do back-to-back years where they're making international trips over to that part of the world from going in 2024 to Korea to 2025 over to Japan where you have Shohei Otani, you have Yoshinobu Yamamoto making their homecoming. Maybe a Roki Sasaki coming back to Japan for the Dodgers. That would be intriguing if that happens as well. But Major League Baseball during this time when the Dodgers have Otani and Yamamoto, it's just a matter of time of when they are going to have the Dodgers go over and play regular season games in Japan. Whether that happens in 2025, 2026, 2027, you can almost guarantee 
that they will do that because there's too much money to be made to not do that. And I think that is something that Otani would think would probably be pretty cool. Yamamoto would as well. And for the game of baseball to be able to grow that, to be able to showcase that similar to how they did when Ichiro was, they brought him back to Japan. You just saw him play his final game in Japan. It won't be Otani's final game, but major league baseball will find a way to get Otani and Yamamoto back over there and just continue to grow this game, this amazing game, try to broaden it out even more international. I think that seems to be a priority for Major League Baseball, and they will not miss out on this opportunity. Whether it happens next year or not, I don't know. And should. And by the way, hey, our next take on Monday is going to be on what the, the roster, the final cuts to the roster. They, they had a traveling squad, and then they're going to have to cut down to 26 people. We're actually going to go over the traveling roster and give you our thoughts on who we think the, the final roster spots will go to for this series with the Padres. And then our, uh, our launch angle for Sunday, Austin and I are going to put together about a 30-minute show on the spring breakout game tomorrow. So we're not going to necessarily cover the game itself as much as we are just kind of the overall prospects that are in it, why they got chosen, that kind of thing. So look for that launch angle coming out on Sunday where we're going to be talking about the prospects and the spring breakout game. Then also on Monday where we talk about the roster for the Padres series. So that's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it, Austin? Oh, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. A lot to talk about, a lot to break down here on Friday night, Dodgers Dogs, and stuff to be coming up in the future with the show on Sunday post spring breakout, which is MLB's initiative, really to highlight some, not all, but yes. some of the prospects within the organization. And on Monday, to be able to talk about the roster that the Dodgers are going to use to open up in Korea. It might not be their domestic opening day roster but it's going to be their roster that they use for korea for those two games you're making me want to drink a beer when you keep saying the word domestic austin it's making oh, yeah. me want to it's making me want to drink like a domestic beer that's that's what hey, i'm thinking every time it's I hear friday you say. night on dodgers dogs <laughs> it, uh, it's friday night in the big town right on dodgers <laughs> dogs as part of the dodgers daily network hey jay dylan hernandez la nope we already read that jay says chano park and yunny uh and Hyunjin Ryu really paved the way for the Korean fan base. No doubt about that. And Korea is just a country that, that paved the fan base for Major League Baseball. But Korea is a baseball crazy country. Yeah, they are they are crazy about their game of baseball. They absolutely love this game. They have their own professional league over there that should be highlighted and should be covered. They have a lot of great talent that comes out of Korea. And they just love baseball. So it is it is rewarding for them to be able to get Major League regular season games over there. They absolutely deserve it for the type of fans that they are and the country that they are. So really exciting for Korea, really exciting for Major League Baseball to continue to outreach to them. And hopefully there will be more talent that comes over from Korea in the future. Matty Man 5 Dodds, he's being funny about Lux because Lux has struggled about leaving Lux and Soul, that kind of deal. That, But the real kind of the question there is, what do you expect out of Gavin Lux? Do they start the guy at second base? What do they do with Gavin Lux in this Padres series? Do the exhibition games have anything to do with that? That's a real conversation to have. Yeah, that is, that's a real conversation to have at this point. It is very difficult for me to read exactly what their plans are going to be. I could see them perhaps using the two games in Korea kind of as a short test run for Gavin Lux to play him at second base. Although I don't know if they are even wanting to do that with him right now. It could be that they're looking at the exhibition games or they're looking at the full series. I have no idea. And right now I don't even know if the Dodgers know exactly, exactly. what they're planning to do with Gavin Lux and whether they're wanting him to be a part of this roster or whether it's best for him to spend some time in the minor leagues and try to figure things out. I have no idea what is going to happen, which makes that part of the team intriguing a little bit tense as well because you see that as a little bit of a weakness right now i think he's definitely gonna be part of the roster for the the two games against the padres because they're gonna want that left-handed stick that yeah that very well could be against when you're going up against you darvish and joe musgrove yeah you, i can totally see that norm lee hey good evening norm norm does such a wonderful job in our conversations every sunday 
Wednesday and Friday. Snell may be going to Houston. And, hey, I totally agree with what he's getting ready to say here. I was completely wrong on this one. I, I did not see this coming. Justin Wilson opted out of his contract. He wanted a major league contract. Might end up with the Reds. I really thought Justin Wilson was going to end up being a fairly large part of this bullpen as a veteran lefty. I, I totally swung and missed on that one. But I think yeah. it's it's fair to say that's an easy one to swing and miss on because he just seemed like the type of guy that the Dodgers get in and they fix and they you know, like a left-handed Ryan Brazier type, right? Yeah, no, he seemed to fit, fit some of the mix of what the Dodgers try to do in the bullpen as they try to get some of these reclamation type pieces where they can help fix and help them develop into really good solid relievers, especially if they've had maybe some sort of a past history of success, or maybe they see something in some of the pitches that they have, want to make a little bit of some tweaks. And Justin Wilson was pitching pretty well for the Dodgers this spring to where it became a real conversation yeah. about, man, Justin Wilson, he could very well make this team. What happens to Alex Vesia? Ultimately, Justin Wilson had his right, and he decided to opt out of his contract for the Dodgers, perhaps saw a little bit of limited opportunities, which I don't blame him just because of the amount of talent that is yes. in the Dodgers. However, the Dodgers potentially could have used an arm like that or potentially could have decided to have a Justin Wilson be part of the squad. That isn't the case anymore. And that is to the point of Blake Snell possibly going to Houston. I don't think anything is official yet, but that seems to be the rumors. In which case, if that happens, Houston is even more scary of an opponent long term. Don't have to worry about them until potentially a World Series matchup, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to piss everybody off by saying this, and and I'm sorry because I love all you Dodgers dogs out there. And like I said, we have a heck of a good time whenever we come on these shows, but Houston's a, a damn good organization, man. They know what they're doing, right? I mean, I, I, am you, I wrong for saying that, Austin? <laughs> uh, you don't want to say that. Obviously, yeah. they cheated to yes. win a World Series. There's no doubt about that. They absolutely did. They have still had success after they cheated, though. That is fair to point out, and they're going to be extremely tough to beat. They have made the American League Championship Series for every single year of the past seven six seven years something like that mm -hmm. uh yeah they are a good organization they are they're a cheating organization but they continue to find ways to have success so all right i'm going to give a personal anecdote the, their manager in 2017 aj hinch he's from the exact same high school as matt kemp which is midwest city in the it's a suburb of oklahoma city just a little bit east of oklahoma city i mean literally from midwest city you can see you literally can see downtown Oklahoma City from, from where A.J. Hinch graduated high school. Midwest City has been one of the most legendary high schools. I mean, it's produced gosh knows how many. I mean, Mike Gundy, the head football coach at Oklahoma State, his, his son or his brother, Cale Gundy, they came from Midwest City. So I coached against A.J. Hinch. Legion ball, high school ball, I know A.J. Hinch personally. And so that situation for me was – a little different than it was for other Dodgers fans because I'm just telling you, man, A.J. Hinch, I don't know exactly what his involvement was in that situation, and it went against my beloved Dodgers. But I do know that he has forever, for the every single – matter of fact, J.T. Ruimuto, he went to Carl Albert, but that's that Midwest City public school district, the, the catcher that's so good in the major leagues. He's from that, that same uh, public school district as well. I mean, that just goes to show how good that talent is. And so it was a little bit different for me because I know A.J. Hinch personally. I've coached against him. He probably wouldn't remember me, but I've talked to him like probably 15 different times about this or that. So I, it was, I was real torn on that deal, still am, because I really like the guy and I've always respected how great of a human being he is. But – it happens, so we're going to move on. We're not going to get stuck on that, right? Yeah, do you, uh, we don't want to turn this into yeah. Astros Daily. I think all of our fans would unsubscribe, which yes. we are still Dodgers on. Daily. Be, be sure we will be talking and transitioning to the Dodgers right now. That's enough talk about that because in 2024, we expect the Dodgers to actually go ahead and win the World Series this year, or at least that's what we're hoping for. Hey, if you want to see any any video on some prospects or any of the players in the Dodgers system, just let me know. I will get that up for you, and we will talk about it. Especially if it's a minor leaguer, we can just let it roll. We've got to be a little bit more careful with our major league content because it is copyrighted. We have like 10 to 15 seconds before we have to flip it back and forth. But if you want to see any prospect video, 
just let us know and we will throw it up there on the screen for you. That way you don't have to look at Austin and I, right? Hey, New Blue Order Christopher, hot diggity Dodger dogs. Good evening, New Blue Order Christopher. Thank you so much for joining. David Razor, off topic, international growing of game. Could Mexico City a possibility for an expansion team? I don't think so. I don't think that I think the next expansion team would probably be Montreal again. That that's what I hear the most. I don't maybe Mexico City, but I, I don't think Mexico is as baseball crazy as you might think. I don't know. I, I they, could were, be wrong. they were I could be wrong. they were pretty good, and there's a lot of fans fan base that they had in the World Baseball Classic last year. So maybe Mexico City. I won't yeah. rule it out. I've heard a lot of, especially the like Nashville and yes, uh, Salt Lake City has been kind of heavy. I'm talking about as different well. countries. Oh yeah, as far as different countries, yeah. Then you're talking about probably Montreal being the one. Maybe Mexico City. Uh, I don't know as far as international how the game would expand. That is something that. You, you should be watching out for over the next couple of seasons is the continue rumors about major league baseball expansion. They will expand to 32 teams. It's only a matter of time. Yes. So we'll have to wait and see when that is. And they're quite still gonna frankly to need to. Oh yeah, no. And they're going to have to figure out what happens with Tampa. They're going to have to figure out what happens with Oakland. As soon as that happens, dominoes are going to start to fall. And then that's going to create more opportunities for guys, especially at the minor league level who might be some of those guys that are on the brink who might not get a whole lot of opportunities. They might actually get some opportunities and be able to prove themselves at the big league level. So that's going to be really cool. I think that's going to be good for the game of baseball to continue to expand and continue to grow the game across the country and also provide more opportunities. I don't know when that's going to be though. Over the next couple of years though, you should start to hear more and more rumors. We have just a wonderful crowd logged in tonight. That is a great question. Akira LAD. Remember where Akira's from? Japan, right? Japan. That's correct. Hello again, Dodgers. I'm watching you near Otani. It's Saturday, 1050 in the morning right now in... In Japan? In Japan. That is right. Akira LAD. Thank you so much for joining all the way from Japan. That's fantastic. William Andrews, good evening, fellas. Good evening, back yourself, Chuck. The games are going to be on Sportsnet. Yep. Sammy Boy Smith, good evening. Hep C later. Love it when Hep C joins. What I always say about our crowd, Austin. Oh, it's not the biggest, but it is the best. Absolutely. Roki Sasaki will make his Dodgers debut in Japan in 2025. And, hey, I don't like to do this a whole lot, but we have a lot of people in the lobby, not enough likes. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Let's get this thing up to triple digits, and let's have a lot of fun. So call all your friends. Text all your friends. Get them over here to Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers Daily Network. And, by the way, I checked earlier today. We are at 2997. We need three subscribers to get to 3,000. Let's get that done tonight on tonight's show. Let's pass 3,000 subscribers. So, uh, Chuck, the game, yeah, okay, Sammy Boy Smith and Hep C. Roki Sasaki will make his Dodgers debut in Japan 2025. Akira, I can feel the excitement happening in South Korea. Yes, games will be in Sportsnet. Okay, Roy Estrada, let's read Roy Estrada's comment. It would be a shame if none of the players show up at U.S. military bases to pay tribute. Akira, there were many Korean presidents that have been thrown eggs in their face. Ha ha, what a crazy true. I'm not kidding. So I guess that's something that happens in Korea. Mari Parker, going all the way to Humphrey, seems far. Yeah, Sammy Boy Smith, what's up with Trinan's x-ray scans? You know anything about that? Uh, last I heard it was negative. Yeah, last I heard it was negative. I haven't heard any sort of updates, but I've also been pretty busy at work yeah. today. So there's to there totally could have been something that I missed today. So if, if there is something that I missed, be sure to leave it down in the comments, but I believe they were negative yeah. last that I checked. And I also believe that he is on the travel roster yeah. to Korea. So I think everything cross your fingers should be fine. So bro, I try to swing a trade for Matt McClain. Oh, the shortstop out of Cincinnati. Um, man, that would be, I would say that would be tough right now just because he's got so many years of team control and especially with Cincinnati they don't like to have that big of a salary on their team uh so he is incredibly valuable so not a, you're gonna have to trade a bunch of guys that have a lot of years of team control and that fit with exactly what Cincinnati needs which I don't know exactly what Cincinnati needs I also think that might complicate the situation just because there was I believe a suspension 
uh, that was given out to one of their prospects as well, one of the middle infielders, third base prospects that they got from from Seattle. Uh, Noel V. Marte, that's, that's right. He was put on the 60-day uh, suspension list. So that might complicate things even a little bit more, especially because Cincinnati, if you remember early last season, even through the course of last season, they were a fun team to watch. Yeah. I got a chance to see them in St. Louis. Uh, it was actually an Adam Wainwright London bobblehead that I had given out, but I got to see uh, Hunter Green and the Reds play. They were still a fun team, so that might be a little bit tough to get a Matt McClain if you're the Dodgers. Don't count it out completely, though, just with the way that Cincinnati kind of roll things out. He's going to play an important part of their team, and I don't envision that happening right at this moment. Yeah, and we have a comment. There is video of Emil Morales. By the way, uh, Manny Pimentel sent me this video. I believe I put a video of Morales on the interview that we did with Manny Pimentel. Let me see if I can get down to it and see if I actually have this, and I can throw that up on the screen. Yep, right here. Here is Emil Morales. Let me go ahead and switch over to him. Videos here. Let me back that up, and we can take a look at Emil Morales. He is one of the international prospects out of the Dominican Republic this year. So there he is fielding ground balls at shortstop. And that is exclusive to Dodgers Daily because, again, Manny Pimentel sent that directly to us. Roy Estrada, Mari Parker serving your country in Korea. Um, let's see. All right, Sammy Boy Smith. Mike says, Sammy Trinan's x-rays came back negative. Yes. Okay, so... Let's get down to some more comments here before we get into the roster talk. Yes, and there is the video normally of Emil Morales. He's a big shortstop prospect with power, still three to four years away. Yeah, and he is a guy that even Manny said could profile maybe as a third baseman because of the size of his frame, as you can see right here. Hardy says, hey, Hardy, good evening. I'm tired of all the hate and throwing of the eggs. Hey, patient Al, thank you so much for joining. Sasaki will fill Bueller's spot on the roster. Hep C says, yeah, there's video of Emil Morales on YouTube and Twitter, and you're seeing it right here. And Jay has said he has a lung contusion, talking about trining, no fractures. So there is Emil Morales. We're looking at him taking ground balls right here. Austin, I don't think you can see it, but he has a long frame, he, kind of that Alex Rodriguez type frame. You can see very, very good mechanics. One thing that Manny talked about with Emil, too, is the fact that he has great mechanics. He takes nothing for granted. But the biggest thing about him, that the probably the most impressive thing about him, is that he is the best player on the field every time he takes the field. But he is also the leader by example and the emotional and spoken leader. This is a young man and Emil Morales that absolutely has every physical tool, and those aren't the best parts of his game. His, his mental game, his leadership game are all elite. So super, super, super excited about Emil Morales. Super excited about what Manny Pimentel had to say about him. If, hey, Mike, if you don't mind, if you're still out there, would you mind going – Mike was actually in that interview. Would you mind linking that interview that we had – with Manny Pimentel, so people can go back and see that interview where he talked about all the DR international prospects. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Austin? Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about Emilio Morales. Still coming up through this system, just recently signed as part of the international free agency class. So he will be coming up through the system shortly. We'll have a little bit more of a chance to get uh, a picture about him playing in-game action. But how cool is it to be able to get some of this footage that we have exclusive to Dodgers Daily yeah. here? Uh, that is really cool. I'm excited to see him come up through the system and eventually make it to Great Lakes, whether that's next year or the year after that. Again, who you're seeing right here is Emil Morales. Now, I know I've had suggestions. Can you put your name, their name up on the screen? When we do just a regular video and I can go back and, and do a post-edit, it's easy for me to put the names on. When we do it live, I, I don't put their names on there when I actually edit the video to begin with because I want it to be clean, and it's I don't have the software right now to go throw their names on there. So this is Emil Morales. Hope you're enjoying watching him. So, hey. We are caught up on the comments, Austin. So what I want to do next, you know what I want to do next? What's that? I want to get to the travel roster. Let's get to the pitchers. Okay, Ryan Brazier, yeah. Michael Grove, Joe Kelly, Evan Phillips, Gus Farland, J.P. Fireisen, Daniel Hudson, Landon Knack, Gavin Stone, Alex Vesia, Ryan Yarbrough, Tyler Glass, now Kyle Hurt, 
Bobby Miller, Blake Trinan, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. That is 5, 8, 11, 14. That is 16. Got to cut that to 13. Who comes off? Yeah, that is, that's a really good question. I guess it comes down to exactly which type of of pitchers that you're wanting to have like i don't even know if they're wanting to keep like some of their starting pitchers on the roster if you're not planning to utilize them in the game so a guy like a bobby miller who isn't going to get a start are you going to need him you're not going to pitch him out of the bullpen so perhaps he's not part of that so let's say that you don't have him on there and then you have to cut that down uh let's say that he's one then you have to cut what two more of those guys down yep if, well, if you chose Bobby Miller, on, not not because he's not good, right? Yeah, not because he's not going to make the roster once you come back to the United because States. Because he's not a relief pitcher and he's not going to start one of the two games. That's that's yes. your reasoning there, right? That is that is exclusively my reasoning. Okay, but don't you have to send a guy down for 10 days? Don't you have to? I mean, it doesn't he have to get actually, options? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. I actually don't even know what yeah, the rules are. He would have to get options. You... And that's that's 10 days, right? Yeah. If, so, if, that, if, that, if that is the case, yeah. if they would have to option him down, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I would right. see that they're looking for their actual rotation that they would have going in there. But they also don't have a James Paxton on this list yeah. from what I'm seeing right now. So I think... From what, from because it's a little bit of exclusive to Korea, I think they can do it okay. a little bit different when some of the rules are. So I, let's let's assume that you can have Bobby Miller without having to option him down just because they're going to Korea. Let's say that you're choosing 13 pitchers for Korea. Let's say that those are the rules. Yeah, if that's the case, then I think, like you said, Bobby Miller is a good candidate because he's not going to be a reliever, and he's he's not going to start one of the two games. I think the other two would be Gus Farland and Landon Knack, and I hope neither one of them watch this show and watch me say that. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think Landon Knack, very similar to yeah. the case that you can make for Bobby Miller being one of those starters over there. Super cool that he gets to go over and experience this in Korea, but I think he might fall a little bit into a similar boat. Uh, it sounds like maybe Gavin Stone and Michael Groh probably are going to make yeah. the rosters in Korea, so that eliminates, and you're going to have to find somebody – out of the bullpen or you're going to have to talk about a Kyle Hurt versus a Gus Farland and you have to make that decision. So I think that is probably correct. I think you're looking at a Tyler Glass now, Yoshinobu Yamamoto being your two starters and then the rest of your pitchers probably being a Michael Grove, a Gavin Stone, a Kyle Hurt, Ryan Brazier, JP Fireisen, Daniel Hudson, Joe Kelly, Evan Phillips, Blake Trinan. Although if Blake Trinan isn't ready to go, maybe a Gus Farland can fill in that shoe on the roster there. And Alex Vesia and a Ryan Yarbrough being part of the 13 members that will be eligible for games in Korea, which we could be totally wrong. They could be a, hey, we need to keep Bobby Miller and James Paxson on the club so then we make sure that we have a roster set for United States. But I think they can be a little bit flexible in this because it's a unique circumstance. Yeah, so I think right there your three we just mentioned would likely be Bobby Miller, Gus Varlin, Landon Knack, and again, for the reason that Bobby Miller is not going to start the game, and I don't think the Dodgers have any plans in using him in relief. You're seeing video of Michael Grove here, and I wanted to bring video up of him because I can't tell you guys, I've had a chance to, to watch him. I saw Michael Grove in Oklahoma City at the Bricktown Ballpark as a freshman in college at West Virginia University. Don't ever say the University of West Virginia. You will get chewed out if you call it the University of West Virginia. It is West Virginia University. Don't make that mistake. So I saw Michael Grove with the West Virginia University as a true freshman at Bricktown. He came in against OU and threw two outs, and it was like, holy smokes, who in the who in the heck is this guy? I just remember, I just remember like thinking, look at this lightning bolt, and being a big Oklahoma State fan found out that he was just a true freshman. And I was like, wow, his name was Michael Grove. And I remember that name. So when the Dodgers signed him, I remembered watching Michael Grove at the Bricktown Ballpark in the Big 12 tournament when he was a true freshman with West Virginia. So then his sophomore year, about halfway through his sophomore year, that's when he has to get Tommy John, correct? So he has to shut down the second half of his sophomore season, his entire junior season, right? So the only pitching that he has done since high school at this point was a little bit as a true freshman, 
a little bit at the beginning of his sophomore year, and then he misses the entire back half of his sophomore year plus some, his entire junior year. Then after his junior year, the Dodgers thought so much of him, Austin, that they still drafted him. So they drafted Michael Grove without him having pitched any of his sophomore, his, his junior year, not the back half of his sophomore year. And then guess what happens? 2020 hits. So then he doesn't get to pitch in 2020, right? So he doesn't pitch, I'm going to say it again, he doesn't pitch his back half of his sophomore year, his junior year, or in 2020. Then in 2021, he gets to double A and people are like, well, man, he's given up Homer. Well, you, heck, yeah. I mean, he hasn't pitched since he was a true freshman, right, in college. He was literally just trying to get off the leash and just trying to get all the feels back. And then he makes his major league debut in 2022, about a year later. And it's like, yeah, this guy literally is still just trying to come back from the Tommy John. So if you feel like you're seeing a little bit different of a Michael Grove than you thought you might see, a Michael Grove that is way or getting way more comfortable at the major league level, you know, yes, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. There are ups and downs. There are times with him where you when this is what I'm trying to get to. There's times with Michael Grove where you go, yeah, man, look at that. That's pretty badass. Then there's other times where you go, well, come on, Michael, let's go. Get some confidence. Let's throw the ball up there like you mean it, and let's go. There's there's ups and downs, right? What I'm trying to say is that's why you have the ups and downs. Not only is he trying to incorporate into the major leagues, right? He's trying to do it coming off of a Tommy John to where everything was really, really, really helter-skelter for him, and he didn't have a whole lot of pitching time under his belt. So this is a guy, if you wonder why the Dodgers – have yet to, to move on from a guy like Michael Grove in the face of some maybe some outings that Dodgers fans haven't been super happy with. That is the backstory as to why. That's the context. Yeah, that's why you tune in to Dodgers Daily is because you get backstories from Casey like that a little bit into the background of Michael Grove and his story of how he comes up because I, I honestly had no idea about the journey that he's been upon and that just makes me respect him yeah. even more as a pitcher, as an individual to fight through that and it, to think how highly the Dodgers think of him that even after he endured all of that, They still trust him. They still drafted him. They're still working through him. And he has shown end spurts at the major league level and a lot, and they're in the minor league level, that he can be dominant, that he can be elite, that he can be unhittable at times. We saw that in one of his outings during spring training this year and during some of his outings last year when he was part of the Dodgers, especially out of the bullpen. Michael Grove can and still is a really good pitcher, and there's a reason why the Dodgers have him on the 40-man roster. So if you you know if you're going to ask me, hey, you know Michael Grove this, Michael Grove that, there you go. That's it. That's exactly. And also the fastball. I know it, it got hit quite a bit, but it got hit because he wasn't necessarily throwing it exactly. It's more about location than it is. It's the fastball is a good pitch. He had the cutter, the knuckle curve is a very good pitch, and he also added a tighter slider. He's always had the big curveball that starts like over the pitcher, the over the hitter's head, right. The problem is you can't tunnel a fastball off of that. So the the first adjustment he made in pro ball was he added a slider so then he could start that slider and the fastball in the same tunnel, right? And then from there, he wasn't able to get lefties out. So then he added a cutter. So since he's become a professional, he's added the slider. Then he's added the cutter. Now we see them throw the cutter to the lefties to get in on lefties, to give them a pitch to get them out. And now the slider, a pitch that he added as a professional, has actually become the pitch that he throws the most and his go-to pitch. How cool of an adjustment is that, right? Oh, that's so cool. Really cool to watch these journeys. Really cool to see them add different pitches to the mix, try different things that the Dodgers, the best coaching staff in the minor league level, tries to equip them with tools that they can add to their arsenal and they can turn into some of the most effective pieces that they have. That's just what the Dodgers do, and they continue to develop guys. And this is why the Dodgers have a great consistently a great farm system in the game of baseball is because they try and they trust a lot of their guys to do new creative things and they 
draft guys that have a ton of talent that maybe they might have a little bit of injury history. We've seen that with a couple of other guys that they've drafted as well, but the talent absolutely is there and the talent absolutely is there and continues to be there with a guy like a Michael Grove. Yeah. And Chris Bobborg says that he heard that he thought he heard that Bobby Miller was going to pitch in one of the exhibition games, yes. which that, that would make sense because if he mm-hmm. pitches in one of the exhibition games, that means that he more than likely is not pitching in one of and here's Bobby Miller here that would mean that he's not pitching in one of the two regular season games in Korea right and that would go to what we're saying that's not because of any view of how the Dodgers have Bobby Miller it's just that you only need two starters and the last thing they want to do seeing that he got ramped up late last year is put him in a role that he's that he hasn't trained for right they're not going to put Bobby Miller in relief like they would Kyle Hurt and so if he does get left off the roster that would be why yeah, no, that that's absolutely is going to be why the Dodgers wouldn't put him on the roster for the Korea series. When the once uh they get back to the United States and it's opening day in Los Angeles, Bobby Miller will be part of that roster and he will have a very clear defined role in the rotation oh, yeah. for the Dodgers, just like he has earned through his performances and through his talent. Yep, so what I want you to watch right here, watch this. He has the 100-mile-an-hour fastball, right? He's got the 99-mile-an-hour two-seam that he can throw. But watch these three pitches in a row. Whoop, there's two in a row right here. Watch one more. In a row, These, this, this is not cut. These were three pitches in a row, three change-ups in a row. I say all the time about Bobby Miller. He can throw the ball 100 miles an hour, over 100 miles an hour, but his fastball is not his best pitch when he's going good. It's his off-speed stuff, his changeup, his curveball, his slider. Now, the one thing with Bobby Miller, I, I've told a few people this. I've been watching him. You've been watching him all the way back to the joint no-hitter that he threw with all the other guys at, oh, yeah. at, at yeah, Great back, Lakes, right? The only in, one in Great in Lakes Lake history. County. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The first one in Great Lakes history back with him. Uh, I'm trying to remember who else was a part. I think Cameron Gibbons was a part of yes. that one. Lala, Nick Lockhart, Nistrini. I believe, was part of that. Nistrini. Uh, I Nistrini, yeah, I'd have to look back to see who exactly was part of that no hitter. But yeah, first great first no hitter in Great Lakes Loons has, history happened with Bobby Miller. It was part of that twenty twenty one Great Lakes Loons team. He was actually the open day starter against Dayton that year as well. So what I want you to notice here, see that well, there's that slider. The 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 key to see that I'm gonna show you the pitch that is the key that, that goes to him, in my opinion, is is not the slider there, but it's that fastball on the outer half. What happens to him, of course, I'm going to back this up right here, and I want you to watch this fastball. If I got it back to the right spot, you're not going to see it there. There's the slider. Let me back it up even a little bit further here for Bobby Miller. There's that. There, that's actually a changeup, but he's trying to throw that changeup off of that fastball on the outer half, and that fastball on the outer half is really what's, in my opinion, having watched him in Tulsa and Oklahoma City, has been the situations when he's given up runs, and it's because he pulls it. You saw him in his last outing trying to hit that outer half. That one right there. That's the fastball right there that he pulls quite a bit. When he – okay, there's the slider. See how he's tunneling that slider off that fastball tunnel, meaning he's starting it off the same location. So let me back up that slider right here. Okay, I'm going to show you this slider, and then I'm going to show you the fastball right there. Okay, see that tunnel location? Remember that. I'm going to change this speed down to – a quarter of a speed so we can make and get see that tunnel right there and then the slider is on that outer half now we're going to watch his fastball here in just a second and i want you to notice that same tunnel of that fastball and i'm going to have a conversation about why that is important i think i'm actually going to change that to a half time speed here in just a second but i'm slowing this down so i can get the correct tunnel now see that same tunnel right there same tunnel but now it's a slider okay so that outside fastball is a tunnel that Bobby Miller uses over and over and over with his off speed. And I always talk about how good his, his fastball is. In my opinion, his off speed is even better than that. Here is halftime speed right there. Okay. That's the fastball that tunnels everything off of it. And whenever he's pulling that fastball, then he loses his tunnel point, and now his off speed is less effective. So just kind of an anecdote for Bobby Miller as far as when he goes good and when he goes bad. Just watch. If he's nailing that that glove side corner to the outside, to a righty, it's going to be to the outside. To a lefty, it's going to be on the inside. He is going to have a really good day because everything's going to tunnel off of that. If he's pulling that outside pitch to the glove side, 
then that's whenever he starts getting flat, and that's when hitters are able to hit off of him. That's just something I've noticed from from him. It happened to him in his last outing, so uh, just kind of something to watch with Bobby Miller. Yeah, something definitely to watch. Bobby Miller is absolutely incredible. His stuff is art off the chart, and this is something I've gotten into a little bit still. I'm still trying to fully grasp and get my hands on this, but one of the statistics that seems to be growing in popularity has to do with Stuff Plus. Really a, a attempt to try to analytically put a number to how good an individual stuff is, how good an individual pitch is, which I don't fully grasp the individual inputs, so I'm not going to take too much stock in it. I know a lot of teams really seem to appreciate this. I'm just going to use it for one of his pitches Hold right on a second, now. Austin, back that up, back that up right here. I want I want to I want to show you this right here. Not yeah. not to interrupt you, but it is what goes to exactly what I'm talking about. See, he's getting a little frustrated here. Another thing about Bobby Miller is that he expects everything to be perfect. There's that high riding four seam. Now watch this next pitch, that right there. That's the pitch right there where he pulls it, whether it be a fastball. He's trying to hit that to the glove side, whether he pull, whether it's a fastball or a slider or curveball, he tends to pull that pitch. That's when he struggles. But look at that pitch. That's amazing. But sorry, Austin, didn't mean to cut you off there, but I wanted to point that out to the viewers. Yeah, no, you're totally fine. I think what I was trying to say is Bobby Miller stuff is absolutely incredible. All of his pitches last year in 2023 at the major league level and great graded out incredibly well, well above league average across the board with his stuff, including his slider, which actually had a stuff plus of 153 which if you look at Stuff Plus, think of Stuff Plus very similar to a metric like a WRC Plus. 100 is league average. Anything above that is really good. Anything below that is not quite as good. A 153 Stuff Plus for his slider last year at the major league level. That metric really seemed to like that pitch for a Bobby Miller. Same with his fastball that had a 130 Stuff Plus. His stuff is absolutely unbelievable, and the Dodgers are just starting to unlock the potential that Bobby Miller has. I'm excited to see what he does this year, his sophomore season at the major league level going forward. And I did do a little bit of history. Loon's first no-hitter. Do you want to know the pitchers that were part of that roster or part of that no-hitter? Yes, I do want to know. Yes, so yeah, so it happened uh, on July 24th, I believe, or at least that's when the article was written, July 24th, 2021. Uh, the starter was actually not Bobby Miller. He was that piggyback starter. Do you know who was the starter in that game? It wasn't Emmett Sheehan. It was uh, Lyle Lockhart Jr. He was not. No, it was actually a different lefty that was part of that game. No, it was a guy currently fighting for a Alec rotation Gamboa. spot. No, he's currently finding a rotation spot with the New York Yankees. Clayton the, Beater. Oh, Clayton. Uh, Clay, Clayton Beater started that game. You got game. me when you said it's a different lefty. I think you said yes. that. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that'll be coming up in just a second. So Clayton Beater started the game. Bobby Miller came in and Clayton pitched Beater. five innings of no-hit baseball. Jacob Cantleberry pitched an inning of... The Cantleberry Tales. The absolutely. Cantleberry Tales. Oh, and then yeah, Cameron I had a chance Gibbons to talk came, to Jake. Missouri yes. he went to Missouri. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then Cameron Gibbons came in and closed them out and co- closed hey, it off. So that's a little bit of history. Great Lakes loons history, which by the way, three weeks from tonight, I'm going to be sitting out. It's probably going to be 40 degrees outside. I don't care. It's going to be loons versus tin caps, Dodgers affiliate versus Padres affiliate. Probably going to have to go up against a Dylan Lesko from the Padres, but I have full confidence that the loons are going to break their opening day skid in which they always seem to lose on opening day i'll be losing my voice that night and then losing it again the next day at the one o'clock game that's only three weeks from today five days away from dodgers opening day though you know who who else has thrown a no hitter for the loons you who's know who that? else has done that absolutely kyle hurt who was that kyle hurt you're seeing him on the screen he threw a five inning no hitter and i think it was Maybe his last outing with with Great Lakes, or one of his last two, anyways. He he got moved to Double A Tulsa fairly soon after that five inning no hitter. That was a pretty cool, pretty cool day because I remember very specifically. You're seeing Kyle he, uh, heard on the screen that he threw a 91 mile an hour slider that day. That's when I really took notice. Of course, I knew who he was from USC and all that. Being a big college baseball fan, I knew all about Kyle Hurt. But you know, coming over from what was it, Miami? 
And I had a chance to talk to him at that point. Kind of a funny story we'll get to Kyle Hurd about to, about him here in just a second. But, you know, hey, okay, he came over for Dylan Floro. I've heard he's talented and all that. But, hey, everybody's talented, right? I mean, the, that year, the Tulsa Drillers averaged the highest velocity of any pitching staff in professional baseball, not in double A, in professional baseball. The average pitch for the Tulsa <laughs> Drillers that year, two years ago, which would have been 2022, was 94 and a half miles an hour. Average pitch, correct? And they had guys like Austin Drury, Jacob Cantleberry, who you're talking about, who were crafty little lefties that were 89, 90. So, man, when you're talking about 94.5 miles an hour, that's ridiculous. And so I say that to say the drillers had dudes. I mean, okay, so that's Kyle Hurt, right? And then I watch Kyle Hurt and I see this 91 mile an hour slider, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's different, right? I mean, not very many people can do that. So, anyways, he, he's with Miami, right? And yeah. he gets drafted by Miami. You know how many games he played for Miami, whether it be exhibition, spring training, or any of it? How's that? How many? Zero. He got traded to the Dodgers before he ever played a game with Miami. And you know how he found about about it? Huh. He was driving down the road, and his ESPN app went off on his phone. He looked down <laughs> at the ESPN app, and he saw that – Kyle Hurt just got traded by the, to the Dodgers. That's how Kyle Hurt found out that Kyle Hurt got traded to the Dodgers. Is that not hilarious? Oh, oh that is that is hilarious. Yeah, I did not know that about yeah. Kyle. Yeah, yeah, that is that is hilarious. Yeah, no, I got to see Kyle Hurt pitch a couple of times when he was in Great Lakes. Actually, so his no hitter was at the beginning of June against the yeah. Tin Caps. It was on June fifth that year, and it, I didn't see the start after that when he was in Dayton. I think I missed it by a day, or I think I missed it by a day during his start during that streak when the Loons were coming back from eight and a half games in two weeks to overtake Dayton. He was played a part in that, uh, but I got to see him against the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers pitch a piggyback start with the uh, Lyle Lockhart when I believe it was a Los Pepinillos Picantes del Norte game, one of the alternate identities for the Loons, and he was absolutely incredible during that game. My grandpa actually had the interact it had a chance to interact with his parents, oh, yeah. I believe in the hotel. Yeah. Uh which was really cool. So yeah, no, Kyle Hurt is He's just starting to showcase how good he is. Last year was a very clear indication with his incredibly high strike. I can't tell you how good his strikeout percentage was last year, nearing 40%. That's not for, that's not just 40% of the outs that he had were strikeouts. That's 40% of every single time somebody came up to the plate. That's amazing. Ended in a strikeout. That is insane. Was tied for the highest swinging strike percentage, meaning with? for every single pitch, how many times he was swing and miss. He was tied with that with Dodgers prospect Sarin Lau, yeah. who you've had a chance to see during spring training. Kyle Hurt, who is on the travel roster, who, if I had to take a guess, has a very good, if not likely, chance to make the roster or at least be eligible to play in Korea during the regular season games. He's electric. He's dominant. The Dodgers need to find some sort of role, significant role for him during the regular season. And if they do, they will not regret it. Hey, by the way, do y'all want to see Diego Cartaya throw the ball down to second base? You know, we talked about his offense last year. I kept telling you, yeah, hey, he got way better defensively. How about that? Look at that release. That is fast. Let me show it one more time. Watch how quick this release is. I want to show you his footwork and, and how great this footwork is. And that's going from the one knee position. Now, take, take note right here. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to back it up right here, this knee position right here. He had never done this before last year. This was a totally new mechanic for Diego Cartaya. So you say, well, okay, well, how hard that can that be? Well, learning how to have one knee up like this and throw down to second base, that's, that's not as easy as you think to try to do with a guy like Kyle Hurt with the amount of movement that he has on his pitches and throwing down to second base. I tell this story all the time, but almost every single day this summer, Diego Cartaya did extra work behind the plate defensively, throwing down to Yorbit Vivas, and then when Austin Gothier got up to Tulsa, it was always, always Austin Gothier too because Austin Gothier is in the middle of every single drill that you can possibly do on a baseball field, right? So when I talk about Diego Cartaya – it frustrates me a little bit because people are like, oh, well, he had a down year. Does he still this or that? Okay, yeah, he did have a down year offensively. I can't deny that. 
but I can't explain to you how much progress he made defensively. Now, just watch this. Watch him throw down to second base. Watch his footwork. Boom. See that footwork to first base? That is just fantastic footwork to first base. Now you're going to watch him throw down to second base here in just a second. Watch this right here. Well, not, not quite yet. It's going to be the next pitch coming up. I backed it up just a little bit too far. Watch his footwork. Bam, right there. Okay, see how quick that is? Now, look, he, he, got his, he got his feet completely parallel to second base where all he had to do was trail the arm. Now, look at the ball on a perfect path. That is a really quick – matter of fact, if you count that, that is about a 1-9 pop time for Diego Cartaya. So, when you talk about Diego Cartaya and his season last year, yes, he did struggle offensively but he made very good strides defensively. You got to see a little bit of that there. And by the way, we have a super chat from Jay. Jay, thank you so much. Great show. Not everyone can send a super chat, but everyone can smash that like button. Do it and help the channel grow. Hey, we have a goal. Jay has set a goal. We want 8,000 subscribers and 4,000 views on every single show before too long sooner rather than later i know that's ambitious but you got to set big goals right yeah no that definitely and i think it started tonight i think if you go ahead and look at the updated subscriber count i think you're going to be a little bit surprised a little bit happy with that i know we have a great crowd here tonight and i believe we did reach hey, the three thousand subscriber mark casey congratulations Congratulations to you, Austin. Congratulations, Jay. Congratulations, Mike. Everybody who's had a hand in this. And congratulations to all of you guys. You guys are the absolute best. So we did go over 3,000 tonight. And look at this crowd, man. How just amazing is this? FC says Grove always shows flashes of nastiness. I just wonder what his future is, starter or reliever. Hopefully he can remain as a starter. Numbers would tell you probably reliever. I think he would probably... I prefer to be a starter, but the the he, for him to be in a Dodgers lineup, he's going to have to be be a, a jack of all trades. Yeah, no, he's going to have to be willing to do everything to even get an opportunity on this roster because it's going to be a little bit of this. It's going to be a little bit of that for yeah. Michael Grove. He's going to have maybe a, a start here and there, maybe a piggyback outing. Maybe he's got to come out and show that elite stuff that he has out of the bullpen. It's going to be a little bit of both because the Dodgers have too much talent everywhere that that versatility, even on the pitching side, is incredibly valuable. That's why guys like Chris Taylor and Kike Hernandez on the offensive side are valuable for the Dodgers is because they can mix and match and fill in wherever the Dodgers need because they have a lot of talent everywhere that you can't have established guys at every single one of positions. You also need that on the pitching side, and Michael Grove is going to have to be willing to do that if he wants to fill in during spots for the Dodgers. I think he would probably prefer to be a starting pitcher. I think he's showcased a lot of skill, a lot of talent with that. But I think more than anything, he would prefer to be on the major league roster. And I yeah. think if he has <laughs> that mindset, he would be willing to do just about everything and showcase the skill that Michael Grove has at the major league level. If the devil had a team, sign me up, right? I mean, that that's how badly guys want to play in the major leagues. Of course, that's a joke. And yeah. some people might not find that funny, but that you hear that going around AAA dugouts quite a bit. That's that's kind of a saying that they have. Hey, we have. By the way, I have an announcement. Kind of sad, but I got a message today from Max Hewitt, and Max Hewitt is no longer with the Dodgers. Yeah. I didn't ask. I didn't inquire. That's all I got was, hey, thank you so much for your coverage. Thank you for being an advocate, and thank you for pointing out all the positives. But got that message this morning from Max Hewitt. Total. Total, total quality human being. Got to see every single at bat of his at Oklahoma State. I've told Max many different times. We text back and forth every now and then. We work camps at Oklahoma State together, and we talk every now and then. I mean, we're not like buds or anything, but yeah. but if I message, he messages back, right? He gives me that respect. Yeah. He's, one, he's one of my favorite Oklahoma State players of all time. I tell him all the time when Josh Holiday decides to step down, Josh Holiday is the brother of Matt Holiday, the uncle of, of – Jackson Holiday, who's the, the big shortstop for the Orioles. I tell him all the time when Josh gets ready to retire and move on and go fishing, right, like, like I did with my high school baseball career, I want you to be the next coach at Oklahoma State. That's how much respect I have for Max Hewitt. I mean, you can see why I think yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I've had – I've actually had the privilege to interact and talk to Max, get to know him a little bit. 
Uh, so if you actually look at uh, my Twitter feed, uh, the Twitter, the post that I have highlighted or pinned at the top uh, is actually a picture and a tweet that I tweeted out of me and Max Hewitt, who is part of the Dodgers organization. Um, and I had the opportunity to do something that was really cool. And I've kind of alluded to this in the past. That I didn't want to highlight him out by name, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now anyway, because we're talking about him. Uh, so they're one of the cool things that I get to do and uh, is I get to with my cousin, with some of my groups that if we go with to the loons games, we actually make posters to bring to the loons games. Yeah. And it's like goofy posters. Like we last year uh, we made a poster called Gremlins, you know, the oh, yeah. movie oh, yeah. Gremlins. Well, yeah. uh, we turned that into a spoof of the loons poster. We also done a karate kid poster, the karate loon. Uh, we've done a here comes the boom. Here comes the loon poster. We're in production of making the 2024 poster. Uh, but anyways, so I'm going on telling the story. So every year the loons do a season ticket holder event. And during that event, we usually go all of the players come out and they're able to sign all of the individual posters. So we go ahead and give them the posters for us to sign. So then we have a little bit more of a history with our poster and we can have the team stamp on it. Uh, it was actually at that event when I interacted with Max, which I've seen him a bunch before. I'm sure he's seen me going to all of the different road games. And uh, he uh, he was like, no, that poster is super cool. So I flat out told him, hey, you want one of these? He's like, uh, yeah. And I knew that we were going to be, I'm going to be seeing him and Lansing some of the follow upcoming weeks. Uh, so what I had the privilege to be able to actually, in that poster, give Max Hewitt a 2022 version, the Karate Loon, oh, cool. and a 2023 Gremlins poster. So oh, cool. I was able to give him those posters. And what I took notice of that had nothing to do with the posters. Yeah. I think it had everything to do with a sense of we see you and you are valuable as yeah. part of this organization. And Max Hewitt worked harder than any person within the organization, moving up and down between different levels, working some time as a bullpen catcher, getting rare opportunities at times. Every single opportunity that he had, it was worth it because he got to play the game that he continues to love and that he got the opportunity to play minor league baseball. I had a privilege to be able to see that. He actually gave me a bat that I have hanging up right yes. over there, actually signed by the team and by him. That is one of my most treasured memories, but also that conversation that we had actually going back to the car on his way back to the hotel, he took the time to be able to interact. So Max is going to do incredible things. Yes. God still has great plans for you, Max. I'm still going to be rooting for you. Whatever you do, whether that continues to go on with your baseball career, or whether that goes down to other opportunities, you will always have a fan here with myself, with Casey, and here at Dodgers Daily. Yeah, and at Oklahoma State, we used to say Max Hewitt is not a person. He is a mood. Max Hewitt yes. is a mood. He is just that cool of a human being. Now, I hate – Listen, I get it. We're getting ready to start the season. We're getting ready to have an exhibition game in Korea. We want to talk about the Major League guys. I understand all that. But, hey, bear with us. Yeah. I want you to remember the name Max Hewitt. He is no longer a Dodger. He's not ever going to help the Los Angeles Dodgers the, at the Major League level. I understand that, and that's why we're all here to talk and we have a big crowd. But I want you to remember the name Max Hewitt because this guy is made out of gold. Yeah, I'm telling you, I did the all-grit team, and he came in like third. Okay, yeah. so please, do me a favor here at Dodgers Dogs. Do Austin a favor as part of the Dodgers Daily Network. Remember the name Max Hewitt, so whenever you see him managing for a team or being the head coach of a college team and winning national titles and winning World Series because everything he touches turns to gold, remember the name Max Hewitt. Please do me that favor. So we're going to move on from there. We have a question about Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Is it that his fastball is too flat? Now, I'm going to say this. I've covered this a couple of times, and I'm point blank going to say that I can't give you a definitive answer. Of course, that's his little slider type left turn pitch, whatever he profiles that at. I cannot give you a definitive answer. There is a big curveball. What I have said a couple of times is I haven't seen him pitch enough. I haven't seen him pitch in the MPB enough. I haven't seen him pitch 
it, it, at all. Okay, so I don't know a whole lot about Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Basically, everything that I know about him is that I trust the Dodgers pitching organization. I trust the scouts. You, you've seen, I've talked to Tom Kunis. I am in contact with Jonah Rosenberg and Jack Murphy, two of the other scouts in the system, going to have a conversation with them. Jonah Rosenberg is the scout that signed Peyton Martin and Jake Polarski. So probably going to talk to him somewhere around May. He's doing all of his amateur scouting right now. This is a busy time of year for him. Same with Jack Murphy. So my comment about Yoshinobu Yamamoto is I trust all those guys because I know they are the best in the game. I will say, though, I, I, I have my, my one thing to watch for them. I've said this is now the third show in a row is, is his stuff in zone going to be able to miss major league bats if major league hitters don't chase all of his stuff that breaks out of the zone? So I think that is a good question to ask. I believe that was Roy that asked that question. I think that's a fair question. We, we won't spend a whole lot of time on Yamamoto because I think I spent a lot of time on him last time. But th I think that's a fair at least evaluation to look forward to moving to the future with Yamamoto. Yeah, I totally understand the argument, especially out of his last spring training outing and even the outing before, especially when hitters started to ambush his stuff early in the outing. Early when he was throwing, early in the count, I should say, See, he really started to take advantage of that. There hasn't been any sort of deep stat cast data into Yoshinobu Yamamoto, so I can't go into, okay, is his flat fastball acting a little bit flat? What I will say is the Dodgers did do their homework when they signed Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and he was effective against professional hitters in Japan, and he was able to work out a lot of these issues. Right now, it seems to be an issue. Hitters were able to ambush that, and it's going to be a real question of whether or not he's going to be able to get swing and miss stuff in the zone. That's going to be a huge hurdle for him based on what we've seen so far. Very small sample size, very spring, in a spring training outing, definitely is something to look forward to going forward if you're Yoshinobu Yamamoto and if you're fans of the Dodgers. So I'm going to cut this over. Take a look. This is this would be the reason why it wouldn't be. Here is slow motion. Watch this pitch hop back over the plate. Let me back that up again. When I say hop, okay, so this is going to start off on the inner half to a lefty, and then it's going to hop back to the right, back to the arm side. That's called hopping the ball back over the plate. You start it inside, hops back over the plate, whoop, right there. That's a good pitch. So that right there would tell you that he can start a pitch and make it look like a ball even with velocity and then hop it back into being a strike. That's the type of stuff that will, that will play forever, that major league hitters will never be able to figure out. Because if you do that and then you turn one left and they can't pick up the spin, then they don't know if it's going to hop to the right, if it's going to stay straight, or if it's going to turn left. And that's whenever you get hitters that, that can't tell whether it's going to, to continue to be a ball or end up in the strike zone. So I think just from what you saw right there, he definitely has the ability to have a type of fastball that could not get ambushed. So I think that would probably be a, a pretty good example of of that question that that Roy asked there, Akira Lad the Cinderella had been shown up to the world to Nakamaniko, the former basketball player for Jitsu team in Japan. Because of this big surprise, the world media they reacted immediately to him. Akira, thank you so much again for joining the Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers Daily Network, all the way from Japan. Japan, yes. Hey, Craig Osterberg, food was good once they got off the plane. Greg saw it. Yang Yi says Otani's wife is definitely not a normal woman. Have see Yamamoto's fastball has good movement. He's just adjusting. I just showed you that movement to his fastball. I'd agree, Hep C. Normally, if the Betts Lux combination looks horrible in the two regular season games in Korea, do you think it's enough for management to make a move? What do you think about that, Austin? I think if they do struggle over there in Korea, that's gonna have it's just going to add more to the sample size of a Mookie Betts, Gavin Lux infield duo really struggling right now. And then it becomes even more of a question of, is it best for Gavin Lux to send him down to AAA? We're already having those questions right now. And if it affects regular season games, not just spring training games, then you can have very then you can continue to have very serious conversations. I'm still positive about Gavin Lux. I still believe that he is a professional major league player and he can still be a good quality infielder. 
right now he isn't showing it right now, and the Dodgers are going to have to do what is best for the 2024 club. What I'll say about Gavin Lux is I've, I'm going to stay consistent with what I've said about him forever is that we can talk about it till we're blue in the face, and it's fun. I, I don't mean that we don't need to talk about it. We do. That's Hey, man, we're, in, we're Dodgers fans, and we talk about all the things that we want, want to talk about with the Dodgers, right? That's great. But my two comments about Gavin Lux, I've been very consistent with this. One is he will do whatever the team asks him to do. He will do it hands down. He will do it to the best of his ability, and he will be a great organization member, and he will be a great teammate all the way through it. He'll do everything that's asked of him, and he'll do it no questions asked. He is a great dude. He's a great teammate. He wouldn't be around still if he wasn't, right? So whatever the organization tells Gavin Lux they want him to do, he's going to accept it, and he's going to make the best out of it, and he's going to be a great organizational member as he does it. That's number one. Number two, the second thing that I've said about Gavin Lux this entire time this organization will fix the shortstop position, and they will not put any one player in front of winning with the team on show with Shohei Otani on it. They will not do it. I promised you that, and you saw that with them moving Gavin Lux off shortstop after 10 chances and six games, correct? They are yeah. meaning business this year, so they will fix that. So whatever conversation we want to have with Lux, it all comes back to Lux will do whatever the team needs him to do, and the organization will do whatever they have to do to fix it. Those are the two, in my opinion, the only two things that you really need to be thinking about with the Lux situation. Is that too oversimplified? No, that is, that is exactly right. Yeah, Gavin Lux will do everything that he can, but the organization is going to do whatever they think is best to put this team in the best position to win because this team has to win with the money that they spent, with the opportunity, the golden ticket of an opportunity that they presented themselves. No one player can go above the team, above the organization, and above the goal of winning the World Series this year. Okay, so the teams that they're playing – in Korea, the Kiwoom Heroes, Sammy Boy Smith's uh, Puig's former team, yeah. And then Saturday versus Kiwoom, the Heroes, Monday versus the Korean national team. Saturday versus the, yeah, and, and then Roy is, is echoing that. Hey, Eddie's talking about, we were talking about Kyle Hurt, hit him where they, where they ain't. Kyle, Sammy Boy Smith, Cartaya, next Sandy Alomar Jr. Yeah, he looks just like, he kind of has a Sandy Alomar Jr. look to him. I know the, the one comp was uh, Sal Perez, the big catcher. For the Royals, that's the one that he gets comp to the most. Yeah, no, that uh, he does give a lot of comparisons with that. Yeah, um, no, he's a very good player, and watch out for him this season. Yep, Carta. Yeah, uh, Mike says the uh, moderator. Mike, appreciate everyone in the chat. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button to three thousand. How about that, Austin? Roy Estrada, yeah, that, because even yeah. the three a.m. games will have a post game show. YouTube, there will be a post game show somewhere. Won't be me doing it. <laughs> I love the Dodgers, <laughs> and I love you guys, but I love sleep way more, So, and I'm old, so that's not going to happen, right? Maybe the oh, next well, day. <laughs> well, the 3, a, the 3 a.m. game will happen at 5 a.m. That's what time the game will start, and if you're talking about the Oklahoma area, so then the game would be getting down a little bit closer to 8 a.m., which I guess is start of work time, so I guess that wouldn't even work at all, and you can't really do a – pre-game show at 4 a.m do you want to do a pre-game show at 4 a.m uh for opening day okay i'm gonna guess Next that's question. probably no all right soul bro says would the universe explode if the dodgers <laughs> traded for max muncie check this out I, this is what the this is the kind of great stuff you get at dodgers dogs as part of the dodgers daily network all right, are you sitting down? Right, you got your yeah. domestic beer ready, okay? That you were talking about earlier, Austin. Oh yeah. Okay, Soul Bro, would the universe explode if the Dodgers traded for Max Muncy of the A's and Will Smith of the Royals? What if the Dodgers had two Max Muncies and two Will Smiths? How would that be? That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? I, I don't know how the Dodgers would be able to keep track of them. Would they have to do a Max Muncy <laughs> one and a Max Muncy two, uh, Will Smith one and Will Smith two? I got a chance to see Max Muncy. He actually played, I believe, on opening day against the Loons last year, uh, which is a little bit weird watching Max Muncy go up against the Dodgers affiliate. Uh, but to have him also be a part of the Dodgers would be incredibly strange. 
Although I guess I believe there's a thing with Will Smith where he just keeps happening to show up yeah. on World Series winning teams. He was with the Braves. He was with the Astros. I believe he was with the Rangers last year. So maybe you do want two Will Smiths on this team. Maybe it it has nothing to do with the amount of money that you spend. You just need to go get Will Smith, which I believe he's on the Royals right now. So congratulations. Kansas City Royals are going to be defeating the Dodgers in the World Series in 2024. Hey, Hep C, he says he also thinks both Max Muncy's have the same birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic hey you know, we are I, to the go ahead yeah. i'm sorry yeah I, I was about to say you know what i'll do a little bit of facts checking on that yeah and by the way will smith is in korea he made the, the trip to korea with his bad back so he is there and that's going to bring us yeah. to the end of this show wow what a show this has been hey we have gone over 200 people in the lobby we're at 217 right now let's get those likes up to over 100 we like to be over 100 228 in the lobby right now this has been just an incredible show tonight and it's all because of you you guys are the absolute best baseball crowd around i say it every single time austin and i would not spend friday night in the big town talking to you people if you guys weren't just incredible and if it wasn't just a heck of a lot of fun do you second that austin Oh, I absolutely second that. This is this has been incredible. You've gotten a lot of Casey and I got a little bit to go a little bit off script, talk a lot about different prospect, different guys that have been and continue to be a part of this organization. We got over 3000 subscribers in this video. Yes, I did double check. Both Max Muncy's do have the same birthday. So that is actually a fact that I didn't even know was true. Uh, tonight was a whole lot of fun. You guys make this show worth doing. I'm incredibly grateful for this. I'm incredibly grateful grateful for the opportunities that I've had to cover a lot of the guys within this system and continue to be able to do that going forward this upcoming season. We are five days away from the Dodgers opening up regular season baseball in South Korea against the San Diego Padres, or I guess you could say it's really kind of like four days because of when it's going to be happening. Uh, it's going to be coming up very, very soon if you're the Dodgers. It's three weeks away from the Great Lakes Loons and the Four Wing Kin Caps in Dow Diamond when they're going to be battling off that I'll be there for that. And I'm going to, I believe I looked at the schedule, I'm going to seven of the first eight Loons games uh, something ridiculous like that, just going to a whole bunch of different of those games. Uh, we are just about in baseball season. As we are get up to St. Patrick's Day, a lucky time of year. How lucky are we at Dodgers, ba Dodgers Daily to be able to have the fan base that you guys have, to be able to have the participants that you guys are a part of this crowd and to be able to follow along with this great organization that has so many great people and so many great talents. The 2024 season for the Dodgers is just around the corner. And when I say that it actually is just around the corner, I've been saying that for a couple months. It is just around the corner. We are here 2024, March 15th in a couple days. Dodgers start the opening day, regular season Dodgers baseball. I just got dizzy Austin. Why is that? We got a $50 super chat from the right field pavilion. 50 Ooh. bucks. Wow. Wow, right field pavilion. How about that? Right field pavilion says go Dodgers. Like and subscribe to Dodgers Daily. What a great what what a great thing that is, right field pavilion. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you. I I can I mean I'm getting giddy just talk. That is just wonderful. That that is a great way to end this show. So to all of you wonderful Dodgers dogs out there, you are the absolute best. You're the best baseball crowd out there. No doubt about it. Austin, you are the best co-host anybody could ever ask for. You are a rock star. So thank you so much. Jay, Mike, all of you guys that are helping grow this channel. Can't thank you enough. And so until next time, which will be Sunday evening, I want to say thank you for tuning in and go Dodgers.